Now joined by TSN Hockey Insiders Chris Johnston and Pierre Lebrun. Gentlemen, Michael Bunting started the series on the top line. Now he's going to be a healthy scratch for the first time in his Leafs career. Chris, what do you make of this call from Coach Sheldon Keefe? Well, really difficult decision for the Leafs head coach because of what Michael Bunting's meant to the team. He played all 82 games in the regular season, so he was a regular member really with no ever question about his spot in the lineup. But what's happened in addition to his three-game suspension, the Leafs winning those three playoff games, is that Matthew Nyes is now on the scene, and he's really grabbed on to a role here in the team's top six. And I think that's what informs this decision most. I mean, part of it is you don't want to take anyone out of the lineup that's won three games for you in a playoff series, three big games, but also the fact that there's no obvious spot for Michael Bunting if you want to keep Matthew Nyes in that top six. And, and so the fourth line remains intact. He's going to have to wait for an injury or some other situation to come along. And, and you know, it's, it's a, a fascinating choice, one that two weeks ago we wouldn't have thought of, but I'm not that surprised with seeing what's happened here in the last week. And imagine this is an organization that really over the last few years has been criticized for uh, seemingly being too top-heavy, spending too much of their cap money on their top core players and not having this kind of depth. But it speaks to the aggressive trade deadline that Kyle Dubas had lengthening his lineup. And listen, right now they're healthy, but if the Leafs do get past the first round and go on a run here, you're going to need that kind of depth because it is a battle of attrition if you go deep in the playoffs. A big development in the goalie soap opera in this series today. Andre Vasilevsky speaking to the media for the first time in this series. Pierre, what did you hear? Yeah, looking at what he told the media down in Tampa is that basically he said what we saw with our own eyes in Game 3 and Game 4 in particular, that the Leafs are beating him with tips and deflections and long shots from the point uh, while being screened. And uh, he gave the Leafs credit because that's a good game plan for really beating any top goal in this league, not just Andre Vasilevsky. You know, I traded messages with Evgeny Nabokov, the former star goalie in San Jose, who has a relationship, of course, with Vasilevsky. They played together in Tampa. <laughs> He's a director of goaltending for the Sharks, and he said, listen, quote, there is absolutely nothing wrong, end quote, with Andre right now. He spoke to the tips and deflections. That's what's getting by him. Tampa needs their number one goalie to look like one right now. Well, we might have heard from Vasilevsky. We still haven't heard from Ilya Samsonov in now a week since he's been on his media strike here, I think imposed by the team. Uh, and so we don't really have a lot of insight into what he's dealing with here in his first real playoff run where he's had some success. But what I will say is on at Wednesday's practice, you know, he didn't stay around for very long, didn't participate really in the full practice. The Leafs say that was planned. But we did see him make a save, and it looked a little awkward the way uh, he did that. And so that'll keep you up a little bit if you're a Leafs fan. Uh, but there was also some good news. Matt Murray did skate for a good long time, maybe 90 minutes or so, starting to take shots from shooters. So he's on his way back. Uh, from that concussion he's, he suffered at the start of April, but it's going to be a little while yet before he's available. With Samsonov, he does do that sometimes, look uncomfortable on the ice in practice and games. He was asked about that late in the regular season. He said, don't worry, Sammy never breaks.